Hey guys, we are joined by the state's chief climatologist, Jay Grimes, a good friend of mine, former co-workers, and Jay, let's just get straight to the point, update us on Francine. All right, so Francine has finally started to make her way or its way to the Northeast. In fact, it turned to the Northeast a little sooner than we thought it might. And with that, if you've been watching the tracks today, there's been a slight nudge to the east. And I wouldn't be surprised we see another nudge to the east when the next track comes out from the Hurricane Center at 4 o'clock uh, tonight. Now, I'm not talking about nudging it all the way over to Mississippi or Alabama. But what we are talking about right now is a cone that really has the Baton Rouge metro area in the crosshairs. And that's a... Uh, that's certainly a problem for the capital city. But this also means that the threats are going up for New Orleans as well. And if we see another little jog to the east, that will only put New Orleans metro area, and that includes both sides of the lake, uh, under the gun. Uh, the other story here right now is that we expect uh, uh, Francine to become a, a Category 1 hurricane this evening or tonight probably stays there the way it looks right now. We're going to probably get just enough wind shear at the mid and upper levels, along with a little dry air out of Texas that'll keep uh, Francine from blowing up. So let's plan on a, uh, a Cat 1 landfall, more than likely in St. Mary Parish, possibly over into Terrebonne Parish, if we see that little eastward nudge. Uh, uh, what we're going to see tomorrow morning, the first of the tropical storm force winds are probably going to start to reach the coast a little bit after sunrise. So that's at least a little good news. It means that most of the big winds will be during the daylight hours. The worst thing that can happen with one of these storms is for them to roll in at night. At night. So we'll get those daylight hour winds, the tropical storm force winds hit us uh, probably in St. Mary Parish, somewhere between about 8 and maybe 9 a.m., by the early to mid-afternoon, that's when uh, Francine, the eye of the storm, will be knocking on the coast uh, door. Kind of coming in with those hurricane force winds around mid-afternoon. Then the storm's going to move probably at about 15 miles per hour. Now, there's a good thing about that in that it maybe reduces some big-time flooding concerns. The downside about that is at that speed, we're going to push tropical storm and hurricane force winds deep into Louisiana. That's why Baton Rouge, Metro Baton Rouge, is now under a hurricane warning. The thought that we could see hurricane force winds all the way up to and maybe even north of the I-1012 corridor, that east-west interstate corridor. And where we don't get those hurricane force winds, we're certainly going to see uh, tropical storm force winds. In fact, tropical storm force winds could reach all the way up into southwestern Mississippi. So get ready for a significant wind event. Now, this is not Laura. It's not even Ida. But it's still going to get your attention as it comes rolling through. And while it's going to move through fairly quickly, we still could see anywhere from four to eight inches of rain with some bullseyes pushing maybe 10 to 12 inches. Two things there. One, that's enough rain to, to push many of the rivers into flood. Secondly, it's going to come and mainly concentrated in about a 24-hour window. That's going to be a real problem, I think, for the rivers, especially in the Florida parishes, where uh, like the Tickfall, the Amit, especially the Comit, and the Tangi, and then as you get farther off to the east, the Bogafalaya, I think all of those rivers are going to go into flood as we go from Wednesday into Thursday. Jay, talk to me about the grounds already pretty saturated, though, that how much that's going to be impacting things. Well, that's certainly not going to help us any, but given how hard these rains are going to be and how quickly that rain is going to fall. The saturated ground really wouldn't have, even if it wasn't saturated, it wouldn't have a whole lot of time to absorb that heavy downfall, downpour of rain. So uh, being saturated, being soaked in parts of the area, that will help those rivers rise a little bit. We've had a little bit of a break after that really wet spell last week. Most of the rivers have come down, not all the way down to sort of base flow, but at least they've come down a little bit. But again, with uh, anywhere from four to eight, and maybe even 10 inches of rain in some of these basins, I do think just about every river will go into flood. Now, the latest forecast for the Amy to Denham Springs keeps it below flood stage. I'm not buying that. I think it's going to go above flood stage, but not critically high. So for 
folks along the Amy, uh, unless you're one of those people that's impacted by f flood uh, stage of 30 or 31 feet, if your impacts are above that, you're probably going to be fine. The Comet, that's a different story. I think we're going to see a flash flood on the Comet and see the waters rise pretty significantly there. And then as you go farther east, the Tickfall, the Tangy, they're all going to go into flood as they're going to be on the east side, the west side of, uh, the, rather the east side, the, the right side of that storm track. The other thing we want to keep in mind is from Baton Rouge eastward, and especially Hammond eastward, that's also where we're going to have some potential for some quick spinners, uh, uh, quick moving, uh, short lived uh, hurricane, uh, or rather Tornado tornadoes. tornadoes. So we've got really all of the formulas here. And if I were to put them in order, number one would be rain and flooding. Number two would be the hurricane and tropical storm force winds. And then number three will be keeping an eye on the potential for those uh, short lived tornadoes. I guess last bit. Last question I have is you have a lot of people who look up to you, respect you, and count on you. I guess your advice to the people. Well, the uh, first thing is, as we work our way through the afternoon here, if you haven't finished your preps, you've got this evening. I would strongly recommend you limit any time out on the roads tomorrow. Yeah, the morning in Baton Rouge is going to be fine, and anybody up and near and along the I-1012, the morning's going to be fine, but things are going to start to go south around midday. And we're going to get the rains in here during the morning anyway. And then by the afternoon into the evening, that's where you need to be home. You need to be done with your preps. And you need to think about, okay, can I get through 24 hours or so without having to leave the house? Because Wednesday, even into Thursday, stay off the roads. Thursday is for the emergency responders, for anybody that needs a little help. There's going to be some wind damage. There's going to be trees and limbs down around the area. Don't go sightseeing. Sit it out. Wait till Thursday afternoon into Friday. Things should start to settle down a bit by then. And I think by Friday... Uh, will at least be in cleanup mode, and then it'll all depend on exactly where that final track uh, uh, materializes. Okay. Jay Grimes, anything else that you'd like to add that I have not asked? That's it, Karen. Just everybody out there, please be safe. Take care of your family, and uh, we'll get through this just like we do every one of these storms. Jay, thank you so much for joining us. To our okay. viewers, we will continue to keep you updated on all platforms. And one last thing I want to say that Jay kind of stressed on is that do not be on the roads if you don't have to, because those first responders, they have to be out and about. But if you get out and you wreck or now anything, they are now coming to work on you or focus on you when they probably were out for other reasons, be it sandbags or something like that. So please just stay off the roadways and avoid sightseeing if you can. Um, as always, we will continue to keep you updated on all platforms. Jay, again, thank you so much for joining us.